holy Saturday, holy smokes, holy smoky cheese. This is a string cheese with a smoky flavor, and it was so good I had to start it before I even filmed this. And you peel it off, and you have those little mini cheeses as you're sitting there snacking, or I dice it up into little cylinders as I eat it. And so today we're going to look at how the Lord is present in our lives on this holy Saturday from 2 Timothy chapter 1. For this reason, I reminded you to fan the flame of God's gift for the Holy Spirit of God that he gave us does not bring us timidity, but rather God has given us a spirit that is full of power, of love, and of self-discipline. That's why we need that strong flavor in this smoky cheese to see that we have a God who has given us strong power, uh, power of love, power of self-discipline, all found in him. We're not to be timid in ourselves, but rather to be strong in the Lord. We're fanning into flame, the scripture says here in 2 Timothy, the gift that God has given us, the gift of forgiveness in Christ Jesus, the son who has went to the cross and went to the grave for us. Then it says here in verse 8, so do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me being his prisoner. Rather rejoice with me in the suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Can you believe that we're to rejoice with the fact that Jesus died on the cross for our sins? We're to rejoice with the fact that as Christians, we're going to be persecuted. People are going to tell us we're crazy. Hey man, how do you believe that stuff about this Jesus? Uh, but it's telling us to not be ashamed, right? Of the testimony that we have about our Lord that's made us um, prisoners. Uh, if we get persecuted for our believing in Christ Jesus as the Savior, um, we know that it's the power of God um, that's working within Jesus, that's working within us. Uh, then it tells us um, about what our God has done for us here. Second Timothy verse 9, it says, He saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything that we've done, but because of the purpose of His grace. This grace was given to us in Jesus Christ before the beginning of time. So it's marked out that Jesus was going to come and save. Even before we entered into sin, it was promised that Jesus was going to come and save us. He knew it before time as that trinity of that God, that son of the father was going to come to the world. He was going to be the center of life. He was going to be the focus of it all. It was predestined before the beginning of time that this would take place and that this would happen. So it's not anything that we've done that said, hey, yeah, Jesus is coming down here because I called on him or I prayed on him or because, you know, I made God move because I made the first move. No, God was always the first mover. God was the creator. God was the one who planned to save us even before we entered into that sin. That's what we have um, from the Lord. How exciting is that for us? And then it says, but uh, it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who destroyed death, who is brought to life and immortality to light through the gospel. Right now, on Holy Saturday, Jesus is in the grave. And tomorrow he is going to rise and he is going to preach to the spirits in prison before he comes up that he has conquered death, he's conquered the devil, he's conquered all evil, and he's brought life with him. And he's giving that life to all as he is raised from the dead. We call that the gospel, that he's overcome all of these things through the cross and grave. And of this gospel, he says here, and Timothy does, um, I was appointed to herald and be an apostle and be a teacher. That's why I'm suffering as I am. We as Christians are called in our places where God has given us life to, to speak to others that good news. Whether it's as parents at home, whether it's workers at work, whether it's good citizens in the government, we're called to speak who our Lord is, our Savior, what it is that he's accomplished and what it is that he's done for us. Yet this is no cause for shame because I know in whom I have believed, even though I'm facing suffering, I am convinced that he is able to guard whatever I have had entrusted in me from him until that last day. And so we just know and understand that no matter what sufferings, difficulties, or challenges come our way for believing that Jesus is the Savior, as the world and the devil try to pull us away and say they've won, we look back in their face and say, no, Christ is the one who's risen from the dead. He's conquered you. No matter how many years it takes for us to get that in and understand, 
uh, the, the celebration of this Good Friday, Holy Saturday, into Easter Sunday is always to remember the work that Jesus has done to overcome the evils of this world, that he's guarding us in that gospel, that he's entrusted to us. It's true. And then on the last day, he'll come again and take us home to be with him in heaven.